And to be honest, I have no sympathy at all. <laughs> no sympathy at all, I'm so sorry. Except I'm not. If you've looked into freelancing at all, if you've looked into any of these self-employed influencers or gurus, you've probably heard some kind of advice like this. How to spend your days in butterfly houses and not offices. Open two to three freelancing profiles. Open two to three services per profile. Work hard at it for six months. Increase prices. Hire other freelancers and VAs to start managing the daily tasks oversee them. Use Notion and Loom to onboard members, sell one to two passive income products like eBooks or courses, scale back working only one to two hours per day and start living. And on the surface, that sounds pretty good. And it seems like if they could get away with doing it and it works for them, then maybe it could work for you. But I've been thinking about this topic and this business model for a long time and my thoughts have been swirling. It's been really hard to get enough of an idea together to create a video about this. And above all, something that just does not sit right with me. And I was having a really hard time summarizing my thoughts until I realized that this kind of concept has a name. And it's a name that pings up a lot of negative emotions for me because it's like drop shipping, but it's actually drop servicing. So today we're talking about why this buzzy business model is bad for freelancers, clients, and the entire service economy. Is it even bad for you? Let's figure it out. Hey, I'm Carrie. Welcome back to my channel or welcome for the very first time all around. Welcome. I'm Carrie Blogger, a career freelancer on Fiverr.com where I've been selling as a Fiverr Pro Verified Copywriter for about the past nine years. And in today's video, we are discussing drop servicing. But before we get into that, we have to announce this week's Blogger of the Week. And if you'd like to be the Blogger of the Week, just like Maria Afron, all you have to do is drop a comment down below and you might get picked. Okay, we're diving right in. We're getting serious today. So if you've seen my videos in the past about drop shipping and problematic e-commerce trends, you know that I have some very candid opinions and maybe some lofty expectations about ethics in business. So when I finally realized that this concept has a name and it's called drop servicing, that clicked into place with me because so many of the issues that I have with drop shipping directly apply to this concept of drop servicing, which in my opinion is different than just outsourcing. And it's definitely different than being an agency, which we'll talk about in just a second. But before I dive in too much, I do want to say that I'm going to be using Alex Fasulo as an example, as I kind of outline my points and my position. That is no hate to her personally. I respect her as a person and I especially respect a lot of the things she did early on to build her business. I also want to say I obviously don't know all the ins and outs of her business because she doesn't disclose how much she pays her freelancers or specifically how she hires them. I've asked her personally about those things and she has refused to answer so I can only say what is publicly shown. All that being said, no hate, no personal attacks, no bullying. Let's keep going. So let's start with where this idea comes from. This drop servicing model is all over the financial freedom part of the online community. You'll also see a lot of talk about taking control of your life, how to get started on freelancing and quit the job you hate. And then of course, related to that is this anti-traditional or toxic work method. People want to get away from that grind of the nine to five and not being able to have any control or not being able to work in a way that supports your best health and life. And yeah, I agree with a lot of those goals. Obviously, I don't want anyone to be exploited in their work. And I know that under capitalism, that happens every day. But this business model specifically doesn't fix any kind of problem. All it does is turn the exploited into exploiters. And that is a dangerous chain. So let's read this definition from a how to start drop servicing informational help blog that I found. Drop servicing is the practice of selling a service to a customer for a certain price, say $100, then hiring someone else to provide the service for the client at a lower price, say $50, and pocketing the difference without the client knowing you outsourced the product. Drop servicing is also known as service arbitrage. You can arbitrage the price difference between what a client is willing to pay for the service and what someone is willing to get paid to perform the service. And let's hear how Alex defines this business model. And today I have one agency manager who oversees a team of six other freelance writers for me. With the support of two virtual assistants, they do mundane stuff. All of them work together in a Slack channel to run my freelancing business for me. You'll notice that she uses the word 
agency. But is this really the same thing as creating an agency? No, because all of this shifty outsourcing is happening behind the scenes. Again, from this blog. The key difference here though, is that the client knows the agency is outsourcing the production of the asset. There is transparency, and that's the big word here, between the client, the agency, and the service provider. So now that we know where the sentiment comes from, why people think it's such a good idea and what it actually is, we're gonna talk about the problems. First big umbrella, it is so problematic for hired workers. Essentially, you're hiring cheap, you're pricing high, you're automating everything, and all you do is just skim off the top. This passive model only works if it's secretive. There has to be some amount of secrecy in order for this to work, and that inevitably leads to exploitation. So I'll read off another how to drop service blog that I found. It is so gross. There are some really talented people on these sites being freelancing platforms, but they tend to charge a moderate or high rate, which means you'd have a very small profit margin by the time you charge an even higher rate to your clients. So to profit, you'll end up hiring some of the cheapest workers on these platforms. And that generally means newbies, which may be great, but they will eventually move up in the ranks and raise their prices. Or people who work for a bare minimum and therefore put in the minimum amount of effort. Their advice continues. If you find freelancers able to consistently deliver the quality you're looking for, they may not be around for long. These people come and go as they find higher paying opportunities and better work environment overall. After all, if you can be charging X amount for their work, unbeknownst to them, it's only a matter of time before they realize they could be charging more too. And finally, it gets better. <laughs> Let's take a minute to talk about today's video sponsor, Zyro. Zyro is the most affordable website builder on the market, and it's super easy to create a responsive online store Store that loads extremely fast. Save hundreds of dollars per year compared to other website builders and enjoy 24 seven customer support with a friendly team of real people, not bots. With pre-made site templates, an AI website generator and intuitive design tools, Zyro makes it easy to build a modern website worth sharing. Use the link in the description with the code carry to save 71% and get three months free with any yearly plan. This offer is only available for a limited time, but Zyro always offers a 30 day money back guarantee. Thanks again to Zyro for sponsoring this video. A drop serving business that's outsourcing to freelancers would never want to tell the freelancers they're doing that because that would lead them to inevitably charging more for their services, which they're bound to end up doing anyway once you help them build their reputation. Another problem is the lack of control. The Outsourced freelancer has virtually no control in this scenario, especially over the interaction with the client if there is a gatekeeper holding this secretive relationship. They have no control over their schedule or their timeline or their price negotiation or the services that are being provided, the growth of their business overall. If it's all being run through a smoke and mirrors middleman, there's no way for them to take control and make the best out of their work, relationship and environment. Another big issue is that they have a higher risk of not getting paid at all, especially because this whole model is built on the idea of intentional not compensating them fairly. So what's the point of compensating them at all? Again, more advice from the same blog. Drop servicing has pretty low risk, especially since you can always put satisfaction guarantees and no refund policies to work for you. Maybe asking the third party to refund if they're not happy and perhaps telling clients you don't offer refunds under any circumstances. So whether it was or was not the freelancer's fault that there was a dispute over an order and that someone requested a refund, the person who's in charge is going to refund. They're not going to have any protection for the seller who actually put in the time and effort and creative energy because the person who's in charge didn't. It's always going to be in their best interest to refund and keep the client happy instead of protecting the service provider because ultimately they know that that service provider isn't going to stay around for a long time anyway because they know that as soon as they wise up to the exploitation that's happening, they're gonna leave anyway. And the fourth reason that this is bad for hired talent is that it obviously skews into problematic and exploitative territory in a lack of benefits. Obviously this is a huge problem for American self-employed people and freelancers in general, I don't have benefits, right? But it's different where I am working for myself and in doing so, I am taking care of myself. If someone is working in an 
agency, as Alex likes to put it, they should be expected to have agency benefits. They should have stability. They should have some kind of an ongoing contract or expectation of the amount of work that they're going to receive. They should ideally have health insurance, vacation days, sick days, basically real employment if that's really what she's doing. But that's not really what she's pitching. Here she says that by doing this model, you know, opening a profile, getting a couple reviews, increasing your prices, outsourcing, you can retire in the next few years. Again, that sounds great from this financial independence, financial freedom point of view, but you can retire only at the expense of others who can't. This is what really pushed me over the edge to make this video, honestly. She says, I'm the only person on my LLC and I have a team of 12 freelancers that I hire as needed. It's the first time in history that just one person can make millions without hiring a single employee. That is not an agency. That is not a supportive employment environment. That is not lifting others up. That is just greed. But let's move on to why it's bad for clients. This one's obvious. They think they're purchasing one thing and they have no reason to believe that they're actually receiving another. And as this financial freedom guru is publicly bragging to her viewers that 100% of her business is run by other people, but the clients, they see something different. It's all I, I, I. No mention at all of outsourced talent. I will write for your blog. I am a professionally trained writer. That's not true. If 100% of your business is being written by other people. And this I think is strategic misinformation. She wants to put her face first for a specific reason. And honestly, I recommend this strategy to everyone all the time. I use my own face. I am very transparent about who I am. And I always recommend to my consulting clients that they do the same if they're comfortable doing so. Because people hire people. And Alex says it herself right here in this video. It's being very transparent with your image all over everything you sell on Fiverr. That is how people trust you. And if they trust you, they buy from you. So I have to wonder why she only wants to show her face and not anyone else's that she is outsourcing to. And going back to her original blueprint. If you're trying to build this drop servicing company by working hard for six months or just getting a couple five-star reviews with your own work or heaven forbid paid reviews or heaven forbid stolen content, she's not recommending that, but I'm saying it happens. There's no way for clients to know when the transition happens between your original work that may have received good reviews or that's the samples that they're reading to vet you and when it gets outsourced into this automated method that is not you. It no longer matches the reviews and samples that they are looking at before they buy. It really doesn't matter how the business was started. It matters what's happening now. And that is never transparently shown. And consistency is another huge issue for your clients because they have no way of knowing who's doing the work. And what's to say if they hire you once, they like it and they get a completely different writer, either because someone else on the team was assigned to it or because that freelancer wised up and left and someone else was hired, or maybe the person who was hired doesn't care anymore because they've realized that they're not getting paid enough and they're just churning out poorly written content because what's the point in trying if you're never going to get paid more? What's the point in trying if there's no actual benefit for your long-term growth as a service provider? This drop servicing model can create widely different deliveries for a client and there's absolutely no lack of consistency in this case. And finally, the big third umbrella we've got here is that it is really bad for the freelance economy. I think as someone who's been selling freelance for nine years now that we are starting to get traction as a freelance economy and that it is becoming so much more common for people to outsource to an individual service provider and feel like they can do their homework, purchase with confidence and get really quality work without having to have the traditional label of an agency overhead. But this drop servicing trend and totally undermines the consumer trust that we've been building up and it hurts our progress as a community of self-employed service providers. Platforms already know how harmful misrepresentation is. These are Fiverr's rules, for example. Misrepresentation is defined as fraudulent, negligent, or innocent misstatements or an incomplete statement of a material fact. Incomplete statement is what I would pinpoint here. You're not telling the whole truth. Misleading profile information. Do not post a fake name, location, gender, or photo. Misrepresenting gig elements. Do not have someone else present you in your gig. The actual workers in this case are being represented by someone else's name and photo. She said, 
She's automated the entire thing. So that is misrepresentation. She is no longer the person who they're connecting with. So I ask, how is this different than just putting up a random stock photo? I personally think that platforms need to take a firmer stance against drop servicing. And as these passive business methods continue to take hold, there will be fewer of those credible, long-standing accounts that can be trusted on platforms. So essentially what's happening is it's undermining what platforms have as the only platform-wide credibility standards. You won't be able to make a responsible buying decision based on how long the person has been on the platform or how many reviews they have or what seller level they've achieved if at a certain point of success, this method tells you to then outsource and completely transition your business behind the scenes without any transparency. The original markers that were earned, again, are no longer relevant. And I'd say another problem for platforms is just the lack of transparency in terms of what management is happening off screen. There's no way for Fiverr, for example, to really see the exploitation of workers or even to see how far the chain of exploitation goes. And it's also problematic for platforms when there is a vendor dispute or some kind of problem because they can't see the communication that's happening. And ultimately it makes it much, much harder for the platform to mediate disputes. So if you're thinking, but is this actually bad for me? You know, if I'm just in it for the money, if I'm just in it for that cash grab, is there any problem for me? Besides the ethics that I think I've already pointed out pretty clearly. Guru would tell you yes. Alex also brought this up in a conversation she and I had. They'll tell you that yes, they're taking a huge risk with their reputation. Your reputation will be directly and perhaps irreversibly damaged should clients find that they're getting unoriginal, plagiarized, or just poor quality work that you perhaps didn't check carefully enough. And to be honest, I have no sympathy at all. <laughs> no sympathy at all. I'm so sorry. Except I'm not. Because it's all a money grab. You're passively skimming off the top based on the exploitation of workers, the manipulation of platforms, and the misrepresentation towards clients. So if all that karma comes back to bite you in the butt and that takes down your reputation, seems like a fair punishment to me. Okay, this video is getting super long. I just had a lot to say. Let's wrap this up with a discussion of how you can outsource and automate ethically. Great. Alex mentions a lot that she says what any logical business owner would do is to scale up into the next stage of her business. And in a lot of ways, I agree with that. I'm kind of reaching the point in my career when I'm considering to do the same, but I know that I, when that decision or that day happens, will make a different choice about the method in which I'm doing that. Number one, you've got to have talent transparency. If you are so uncomfortable with honestly sharing who you are working with and who you are hiring, then you clearly have a problem with your hiring practices. Number two, you have to use the right label. You are not a solopreneur. You are not a free freelancer. You are not a self-employed service provider. You are an agency or you are a team lead or you are a marketing collective, or maybe you want to call yourself a multi-vendor service provider. Those are better titles, but you need to adapt your name to the reality of how your business has evolved. And number three, you need to pay ethically and honestly. This whole conversation started in financial freedom. That's where this started. It started in response to toxic work. It started in response to taking down capitalism and how people overhead are doing harm to workers below them. That's what it looks like to me if the person on top of this pyramid. We have to lift other people up. Otherwise, all the system does is just teaches the next person in line how to exploit the next person in line, which ultimately harms the people who are in the greatest level of need and the people with the least amount of power. Okay, you can comment that my head is in the clouds and you can comment and say, I am ridiculous for expecting this kind of perfection in the world. But really I do truly, truly, truly expect everyone to do better. It is so possible. And ultimately the effects are really, really devastating if we don't. If you're still watching, you are my actual hero. Thank you so, so much for being here. Please be sure to check out the links in the pinned comment and description down below for stuff I've got going on, including my dystopian sci-fi novel, which is back here called Without Disruption. Oh, that was a long one today. That was a lot of rant. I'm a little scared about the comments I'm gonna get, but I don't know, I had to say. You are worth so much more than your workload, whether you're working for yourself. Okay, I'm done. Last, last job. Okay, let's get back to work.